Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, Cool Wake Magic Gameplay. This time around we are on the Void of Hellfen, playing as the Indomitable Dawi against the Perfidious Skaven. So, we are doing a Vanguard build, it's definitely one of those things I like to do with the Dwarves. A lot of people say it's gimmicky and it's unreliable, but I think against certain factions, uh, it does definitely stand a decent chance. And was, I think Skaven are one of those factions where I can really work relatively effectively, if you know what you're doing. So... I decided to run with a Rune Lord. I think the Rune Lord is a pretty decent choice. Uh, I did bring him with the um, Anvil of Doom. Obviously, this way he doesn't get knocked around. But most importantly, this does allow me to bring the Locus of Power. Obviously, this gave him a decent selection of magic damage and uh, units that cause magic damage. And so, Locus of Power will just make my units that little bit tankier. Uh, you will often see uh, Plague Monk Sensor Bears in this sort of matchup. And in that, in that, in that case, stripping him down by a further 15% is really effective. It gives your Dwarves all 44 or a 40% magic resist. Uh, of course, he also does have the Master of Wrath and Ruin, which is useful for that slow or crushing uh, blobs of infantry, especially if it's something you struggle to take out otherwise. And then, of course, the Master of Negation for that 44% damage resist. Uh, otherwise, he's a pretty tanky lord himself with 55% magic resist, 15% missile resist, and 25% physical resist. Basically, Warp Lightning Cannons are doing almost nothing to him. He's only slightly below the uh, Fae Enchanters for effectiveness against those. Um, and, of course, physical resist is going to be very useful if we are slugging it out. Let's say some of these uh, Plague Monks or uh, the Doom Mule. Um, up in the sky, my only other non-Vanguard options here, two gyrocopters with steam guns. You might be wondering why steam guns instead of brimstone guns. It's because I felt that with this army, I'd be a bit more susceptible to getting overwhelmed by, say, blobs. I, th I figured that my miners and my Norgrimlings and Ironbreakers would hold out long enough. Um, and I'd want some extra clear uh, clearance for crowds because I figured my shooting would be tied down dealing with monsters and na big nasties. For my front line, it is a three trio of normal miners. You can see spread out here, spaghetti lined, because I was expecting my opponent to be directly across from me, backed by a miner with blasting charges, the Norgrimlings Iron Breakers, as well as the Ekron Miners. And these guys, of course, will absolutely, all three of these units will just trash some of the sk squishy Skaven units, uh, overwhelm them with blasting charges. And they can trade, especially the Norgrimlings Iron Breakers can trade very effectively with anything Skaven put on the table. Behind that, three units of rangers. I actually deployed, as you can see, I deployed these rangers here on this uh, this edge of the uh, mountain or the hill because I was expecting that if my opponent came in from this flank, um, I'd be able to plug it up and I'd be able to block him off. Uh, and I figured this way, if my opponent flanked me from around here, that it would be the uh, Bunkman's rangers absorbing the blow. As it turned out, that wasn't what my opponent did. But nonetheless, they should be pretty sheltered back here. Also, three units of Bugman's Rangers out here on the flank, uh, fleshing things out. Perhaps I should have swapped these Bugman's Rangers with these Rangers over there. Uh, nonetheless, these guys are basically just roided up Rangers uh, with regen and psychological immunity and crazy melee stats and more ammo. And they're just they're just great Rangers that are very expensive. Finally, in the back, we do have two units of Rangers with great weapons, as well as a single unit of the Ulthar's Raiders, the Regiment of Renown, who can, of course, provide that marked by Ulthar, which is, means that if I manage to uh, tie down a unit like, say, a Doom Meal or... Uh, Lord on a uh, screening bell or something like that. I can annihilate, annihilate them very quickly because the DPS on these guys is ludicrous. You can see 26 armor piercing damage, 6 missile damage, and that's all being dumped every 5.6 seconds. Really, really pretty crazy. I'm definitely a big fan of the th Rangers with Great Weapons. For my opponent, he decided to go with a super cheap front line. Obviously, Skaven Slaves will soak up blasting charges and all that sort of uh, stuff. Uh, projectiles from the Boral or the Rangers and all, everything like that. Uh, and then he went with, interestingly enough, multiple Plague Monk Sensor Bears. Now, I'm not a big fan of this unit in the Dwarf matchup, just because it causes magic damage, so Dwarves are instantly taking 25% less. Um, <coughs> and these guys, uh, well, they do have solid melee stats. They are rather squishy, so definitely Blasting Charges and Quarrelers and those sorts of units can really mess you up. So I'm not the biggest fan of these guys, but nonetheless, they do have AP, and they could trash my Miners, my uh, Buckman's Rangers, my Rangers, all those units pretty effectively. Similarly, Plague Monks, uh, decent choice in my opinion. You can, of course, debuff armor with the various Skaven uh, gimmicks, and these guys will do a lot of work. That said, my opponent's main strike force here, a duo of Plague Priests, and these guys are very potent if they get into your lines, because they do have Vermintide, they can spawn hordes of clan rats. They do have that built-in Pestle and Breath, which even, especially against the Rangers, can do decent amounts of work. Uh, and they do have a constant aura with the billowing death, which is slowly but surely chipping away your unit's HP, which can be really rather devastating. Um... Fortunately, though, these guys are doing magic damage, so that is all going to be re reduced by the power of the Rune Lord. So the Rune Lord here is good with that 40%, uh, get providing that extra 15% magic resist, it's going to be very major, a very major buff. Finally, my opponent does have a Grace Seer of Plague over here. Ready to dive in and provide additional support. I'm not entirely sure 
uh, what exactly he brought. He does have the Blast with Filth, he does have Wither, he does have the built-in Crash Scorch from the uh, Screeching Bell. Uh, Unholy Clamor, of course, for that buff, Vermintide. Um, so definitely a decent selection of spells. Uh, Portents of Verminous Doom, interesting choice against the Dwarves. Minus 4 leadership usually won't make that much of a difference, but can still be useful. Uh, and of course, Arcane Conduit. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of bringing Grace Years of Plague in this matchup, because I, I think that you might as well bring a uh, at least a single um, one with Lore of Ruin. Finally, my opponent does have two Doom Wheels, and you can see they're trundling forward, uh, going to f trying to find the Breach here in my line. Blasting Charges are going to push back these Skaven Slave Spears, though obviously <coughs> this is going to expend my ammunition on these poor Miner's Blasting Charges. Now you can see the the Crack Skull here or the, uh, does go through and does almost nothing to an Organized Iron Breakers. They just kind of laugh it off and don't really care. In the meantime, Satchel Charges are being thrown, flung, the last two flung into that blob. You can see my Gyros are flying over to start incinerating this unit of Skaven Slaves with Boiling Steam. My opponent, in the meantime, is trying to warm his way around the flank, and you can see he succeeds managing to squeeze past just barely. And you can see those gyrocopters already raking in several kills. These guys are up to 61. But the uh, Doom Wheels have rolled through my front line. Um, <coughs> obviously, the Skaven Slaves here will break upon the rock of the miners, but the Doom Wheels are in, and they are being followed by all these nasty, nasty gray seers. So I have been throwing my Rune Lord in there. I have popped the Master Rune of Negation, trying to stop these guys, and I do drop a mark by Ulthar. And let's watch how fast this guy goes down. You can see he's going down like an absolute 9-pin, already down half HP in the space of seconds. And... Obviously, the Doom Wheel doesn't have the best of or the best of animation attack animations, and you can see it just gets annihilated by those volleys of uh, throwing axes, and just gets destroyed. It's immediately shattered, and that leaves this Doom Wheel isolated and alone. In the meantime, over here, these plague priests and these units are getting snagged on the Norgalmi's Iron Breakers as well as the miners. Of course, miners are rather heavy. That is one. Uh, the the dwarves did get a major buff to their weight, and uh, so they're much tankier or much more much more difficult to plow through. Up here, you can see the gyrocopter still. Uh, plucking away at these Plague Monks. You can see I did hit these Plague Monks Sensor Bears with a Master Rune of Wrath and Ruin. Perhaps a little bit of a mistake because I did need that slow later on for these units that are pushing through. Uh, I'm trying to get clear here. But, but you can see those spell casts are really doing almost nothing uh, to the Rangers because do, they do have those buffs being provided by the Rune Lord. Over here the Doom Wheel is getting shut down pretty hard. You can see the Throwing Axe is just tearing through it. Uh, th Rangers with Great Weapons are such a powerful choice. They really uh, never underestimate them if you're playing against Dwarves. You always want to shut them down as quickly and effectively as possible. Over here, you can see the Plague Priests are getting chipped away at by the Bugman's Rangers. Obviously, Bugman's Rangers don't have great AP on the crossbows. I do believe it's only about three. Um, oh, four. So, better than, better than I expected, actually. Um, but uh, And these guys do have 100 armor. But, uh, none, nonetheless, um, these guys will not be able to um, cause any fear. They, these guys are immune to psychology. And these guys just have such good leadership. They're just going to be able to stay in there, keep tanking, while my throwing weapons are raining down among them. And this is definitely a big mistake for my opponent. He's trying to shut down these Bunkman's Rangers, but these are not the main threat. The main threat is those throwing axes who are going to be chipping away constantly at these poor priests. Uh, in the meantime, the Rune Lord is turning around to go provide support over there. Uh, he is very tired already from all that fighting, but uh, he will provide that support. And you can see so much fire going down, and these Scorches are doing absolutely nothing. In the meantime, the miners are buying time, and this infantry blob has been completely stomped by the power of the gyrocopters, the miner, the Ekern miners, uh, Norgal Mines Iron Breakers, and those units. So definitely some nasty business going down. You can see over here these Norgaling Iron Breakers coming back to try to help. I did push up some forward some Rangers to absorb the charge because, of course, Rangers don't, aren't going to be doing that much damage. I need the throwing weapons to be doing the majority of the work here. Um, <coughs> so I'm going to use the Norgaling Iron Breakers here to mop up these clan rats with some well placed blasting charges, get them breaking. Um, usually, once the units are disintegrating and they start routing, I've noticed I think they don't come back as easily. Although uh, it might just be something I've noted, something uh, just perception. Nonetheless, over here you can see these guys are all under half HP. I'm not doing a great job focus firing, and this is definitely another major mistake. Ulthar's Raiders are out of ammo, so I'm plowing them into the fray. Uh, but I do still have marked by Ulthar, so I'm debuffing this nearest Plague Priest and trying to focus him down. Unfortunately, the Plague Priest, they do have that animation where they kind of push forward, and that makes them harder to hit. By this point, my opponent does throw in the towel um, as my gyros are chasing off the rest of his force. There they basically have, and now they're coming back. And uh, yeah, definitely a quick win for the uh, Dawi. So definitely I think Vanguard build, you will often see players say it's just kind of a gimmicky, cheesy strat that doesn't really work reliably. Personally, I'm not of that opinion. I think it can, it's definitely a decent, um, it's definitely a decent and viable strat against the right factions. You obviously don't want to be doing it against a faction like, say, Beastmen, who can overwhelm you very quickly, um, usually. Obviously you can pull it off sometimes, uh, but you, you definitely need to think it through, uh, because you will not have the same crowd control options that you would have normally. Normally you have your Thanes in there, you, normally you have your Rune or your Rune Smiths or your Dragon Max Slayers uh, to snare your opponent. And you really can't count on that. Um, 
if you're doing a Vanguard build. So you can see, if you look at the army, the miters didn't do anything great except these miters with blasting charges, which got 72 kills. Obviously, it gets Skaven Slates for the most part. But uh, Ekron Miners and Norgamine's Iron Breakers are doing some major work. Those blasting charges are just so potent against the vast majority, actually, basically anything the Skaven bring infantry wise, you can clear away with blasting charges. Uh, even Stormvermin can get messed up pretty badly by those. And Stormvermin really don't have a great unit for clearing through the doors because, or infantry unit for clearing through doors because the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers are, that cause magic damage, uh, which gets reduced by a further 15% by the Rune Lord. Uh, Stormvermin don't have AP. Stormvermin's Halberds have atrocious melee stats. Um, and Plague Monks don't have AP. So they're basically the four elite. You, they really only have Death Runners with Weeping Blade, but Death Runners are not a popular pick. You won't see those very often. Um, even though they're, in my opinion, a very potent unit that I think gets underutilized. Uh, especially for their support function. But you don't see it very often against dwarves. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but they they can work. And uh, definitely never underestimate them. So usually what you'll see is you'll see all these sort of monstrous units. You'll see Doom Wheels. You'll see the uh, uh, various uh, Screaming Bells, Plague Furnaces, and Rat Ogres are a very common pick. And for that, the Bugman's Rangers and Rangers are just such a potent pick. Uh, and obviously, Rangers with Great Weapons can annihilate those Doom Wheels. You see all that Doom will go down like a 9-pin, uh, getting just peppered down into the space of seconds. Never underestimate the power <laughs> of thro throwing axes. Uh, that is definitely a lesson for the day. And the Gyros did great. Now, I'm not a big fan of Gyros in general. I don't think, especially with the Snare Buffs, I don't think they're that good. But these guys do have the, those Steam Guns. They can do quite a bit of work. Um, they can still clear away, say, Skaven gun crews, uh, and clear up Skaven artillery if they d they're forced to abandon it in a push to deal with your rangers. Um, they can obviously apply pressure to all those squishy infantry units, so definitely, I think, a decent choice. And if worse comes to worse, you can always try to kind of pin large Skaven units with the Gyrocopter's Mass, because they are still a little large and heavy unit. Um... As far as my unit performance goes, yeah, you can definitely see. I think those rangers did an okay job. They basically each unit did what it was meant to do, and that was. I couldn't really ask for much more. From my opponent's perspective, uh, I'd say ditch the plague monk sensor bearers. Perhaps ditch, it, ditch the plague monks entirely. Get a few more skaven slaves in there. Um, it doesn't really matter which ones. Skaven slaves actually aren't necessarily worse than skaven slaves, just because they do have that extra melee defense. But um, ditch them and bring uh, rat ogres. In my opinion, they're a much better pick if you're trying to fight dwarves. Um, the other uh, the other thing worth mentioning, I think, is that it can often be worthwhile bringing a, um, gr uh, not a grace here, a uh, engine seer, a warlock engine or engineer, because those, not an engine seer, I think that's that's forty k, but the warlock engineer, because he does have the um, warp warp stone armor, and that can cause a constant sort of mortis engine effect, and that's very potent if you combo that with. The, the and it's much cheaper than bringing plague furnaces, um, so I think that's a decent choice. Definitely, not, I wouldn't bother with two. Pl uh, I wouldn't usually bother with plague furnaces, and if you do, I would definitely wouldn't bother with plague monks and plague monks sensor bearers. Cram in rat ogres. Uh, rat ogres will do you a great job against the vast majority of the dwarf lineup. You just need to make sure to shut down that back line with clan rat summons. Nonetheless, great game to my opponent here, Shark Plane here. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was pretty quick and decisive, but I thought it was a lot of fun. It's fun to see the Dawi Vanguard, in my opinion. I I enjoy playing it. Um, and yeah, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe down below. If any comments, criticism, any questions about the game or anything like that, be sure to share those and I'll respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.